Okay, now we're going to look at some functions and we'll start with some very simple functions. And we're going to graph, we're going to sketch graphs of the corresponding area functions. So in each case, we're going to imagine a vertical line right here, starting at x equals zero and sliding to the right. And as it moves to the right, it sweeps out this area behind it. And we're going to imagine how that area A, right there, changes as x increases. And we're going to graph that down here on the area axis. So what we'll have down here is an area function that corresponds to this. This area right here has a different value for every value of x right there where that vertical line is. Now in this first case where my function f is perfectly flat, you should see that as x moves, if we imagine this, this vertical line right here sliding to the right at a steady rate, then the area a right there will increase at a steady rate. So my area graph will do something like this. Okay, of course it starts down here at zero because when x is zero over here, this line has not yet swept out any area. So the value of my a graph is zero. As this moves to the right, the area increases and it does so at a steady rate. So this graph slopes up and to the right and it's linear. Now let's look at the second one. This is exactly the same, only my value of f is a little bit bigger. So once again, imagine a line here starting at zero and moving to the right. And as it goes further and further to the right, there's more and more area enclosed behind it. And how does that area change as x increases? Well, as x gets bigger, this area enclosed, or the area that this vertical line has swept across, that area increases. And it's increasing at a faster rate than it was in this first case, because the value of f is up higher. So this graph down here is also going to be increasing in a linear fashion, but it's going to be steeper. Now let's look at the third one over here. Imagine a little vertical line right here starting at zero and moving to the right. And as it moves to the right, it sweeps out this area behind it. So how does this area change as x increases? Well, clearly a is increasing, but as x increases, the value of the area increases at a faster rate. You can see that a little incremental change over here at this x value increases the area by a little small amount, but over here at a larger x value, it increases area by a larger amount because the value of the function is higher. So the rate of change of area is increasing. Not only is the area increasing, but the rate at which the area is changing is increasing. And the area graph is going to look like this. And it turns out that if my, my original function is linear, then my area function is going to be parabolic. We'll be able to prove that before too long. All right, let's look at three more. Uh, this one, here we go. Okay, here, my f graph, we're told, is linear. This is a straight line. And again, we imagine a vertical line starting over here and moving to the right. Now, at the very beginning, the area that has been swept out is zero. So I'll start by plotting a value of zero. As we move to the right, it sweeps out this area. And so my A graph is going to be getting bigger. Now notice at first, this first little piece of area is large compared to later pieces because the value of the function is higher at the beginning. So my area is increasing rapidly at first and then increasing less rapidly as this line gets further to the right. So I'm going to draw my A graph increasing rapidly at first, but then increasing less and less rapidly. 
Now notice this x value right here. If I make a little dashed line coming down to the corresponding x value on the a graph, you want to draw this a graph right here as having a slope of 0 at that point because the f graph has a value of 0. As this gets all the way across to the right, the area is increasing the whole time, but it's not increasing at a very rapid pace when the value of f is really small. If we think of these as little rectangles under here, those little rectangles are getting smaller and smaller. And at this point, they have a height of 0. So moving to the right, right at that moment, doesn't increase the area any. So the rate of change of a with respect to x, the slope of a is 0 at that point. So what we've drawn here, this is actually parabolic. This is not like a square root curve. It's not like a sideways parabola. What this is, uh, I'm going to come over here and make a quick sketch. This is a parabola opening down, something like that. And we are looking at a little section of it like this, Okay, that section right there. So if we were to draw this whole parabola, it would have a vertex here, and it would be going down like that. And if this is linear, this will be parabolic. Okay, now let's look at the next one. Okay, and it, once again, we imagine a vertical line right here moving to the right and sweeping out some area. So as it moves to the right, it sweeps out some area, a lot of area at first, and then less. So my area starts at 0, my area function down here starts at 0, and it's increasing rapidly at first, and then less and less rapidly. At this point right here, at this x value, the area function is not increasing at all, because the little, little green lines that I've been drawing under there, if you think of these as little rectangles under here, they're infinitely short right there. So at that point, my area function has to level off, has a slope of 0 right there. And then if I continue to the right, the area continues to increase again. And it does so at an increasing rate. And it turns out that if this is parabolic, this will be cubic. And you may have intuited that already, but we'll be able to prove that before too long. Okay, and this next one here, once again, imagine a little line here, and it's moving to the right and sweeping out area as it goes. So you can see that area growing at a steady pace. So my area graph starts at zero and grows at a steady pace. But once we get to this x value right here, something happens my f graph has a discontinuity in it. If I continue this line here moving to the right, once it gets to this x value, the area starts growing at a faster rate because the value of the function is higher. So that means my function down here has to start increasing at a faster rate. There will be a little corner right here at that point. And a couple more. And this one, once again, we imagine a little line here moving to the right. At first, it is swept out no area. But as it moves to the right, it sweeps out more and more area. But this value, this f, f value right here, is negative. So we consider this negative area. My a is growing, getting bigger and bigger in the negative direction. It's becoming a number of larger magnitude, but it's negative. And then this last one right here, we have a straight line here that's linear, and we're told that it's congruent. So this triangle here, those two triangles are congruent. That's what we mean by that. And um, imagine a line right here moving to the right, and as it moves to the right, it sweeps through, sweeps through some area, that area you see is growing rapidly at first, but as we get further to the right, it's growing less rapidly. So my area function, which starts at 0, 
it grows and then grows less rapidly. And right at this x value, it's not growing at all. It's growing at a rate of zero. And then if we continue to the right up here, see that? The area, let's do it again, the area continue to the right, the area is growing again but in the negative direction. So this graph which peaked right there is now going back down. And at this x value right here, I can make this a little bit better down here. Okay, Because those two triangles are congruent, all the growth in area right here, which caused an increase in my a value, is going to exactly equal all the growth in that negative area right there, which causes a decrease in the a value. So this is symmetrical. That's a parabola.